אז אנחנו הקבוצה חמש, נציג באנגלית, אוקיי? So with a group with Ifat, myself, Meron and Caroline. Um, the, the research subject is all the new mediators in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, benefits and risks for China, European Union and Switzerland. Um, our research question is as follows. What is the impact of China's, the EU's and Switzerland's strategies of mediation in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and their respective international position? So why we think it's an interesting research question? Uh, because actually when an international actor acts as a mediator, as you know, uh, toward the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it thinks that it, uh, it will strengthen its international position, right? Yet it seems that it has an intended effect, as a matter of fact, on the international position, on the international image, for instance, the European Union is willing to strengthen its image as normative actor, as I said yesterday. But it seems that uh, conversely, it weakens its action, its strategy of mediation, weakens its international position, right? Conversely, Switzerland, through its strategy of mediation, uh, manages to strengthen its image as a neutral actor on the, on the international scene. So now what will be the impact of the new strategy of mediation of China okay, on its international position? So our first hypothesis is that um, their willingness to act as mediators relies on different factors, economic factors, political factors, and they will next be more visible on the international scene. The second hypothesis is just the one I mentioned now, is that the fact that they consider that uh, acting as a mediator will strengthen their position okay, on the international scene. And the third hypothesis that is important for us is that it seems that the more an actor commits itself to a specific peacemaking norm, the two-state solution in this situation, the more it risks to compromise its capacity to act as a mediator toward both Israelis and Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And then, as a consequence, it may weaken its image as an international actor, right? So here we did a nice table to summarize our hypothesis. So the motivation of the EU, as I said uh, earlier, is to be perceived as an, a normative power. China, well, we can put it like more uh, as an economic power. Switzerland, a neutral power. Their strategies of mediation, as you know, the EU is strongly committed to the two-state solution and it would like to implement a linkage through its bilateral relations throughout Israel, for instance, or the issues of labeling and so on. China is implementing a strategy of mediation that we can call one road, one belt strategy, and it's more willing to delinkage, actually, uh, through its uh, relations throughout Israel, um, the implementation of the two-state solution, and, uh, and its actual relation toward Israel. While Switzerland, uh, wants to maintain neutrality and to strengthen its spiritual relation, main aims. So now what are the impacts on uh, the international position of this uh, mediation strategy? Well, it seems to us that the, uh, the effects of the EU strategy uh, actually is to weaken its international position, right? While uh, Switzerland, as I said, is um, 
uh, managed to strengthen its international image as a neutral mediator, a neutral actor on the international scene. China, we suppose that it uh, enabled uh, it to make its superpower status recognized on the international scene. So we need to check this also. It's not like uh, it has been proved yet. Uh, so now the methodology. So first of all, we're going to study um, official statements that are released by the European Union, Switzerland and China regarding the two-state solution specifically. Um, then they will, we will study the nature of the bilateral economic and political ties with Israeli and Palestinians to assess the level of commitment uh, through official documents and statistics. Uh, on the third, uh, third, uh, moment, third uh, aspect, we will do a comparative content analysis of the Israeli and Palestinian Authority official statements um, and how they are portrayed in the media um, regarding also the reception of each other's mediation activities. Uh, finally, um, this will lead us to uh, study the impact on uh, each actor international position um, in the media. So why do we care about that? First of all, uh, we will manage to identify new types of motivation and their application to mediation strategies toward the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. China being a quite new actor, Switzerland being a latent actor throughout the peace uh, uh, negotiation, and European Union quite a striking actor. Uh, we will study the nexus between the mediation strategies regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the international position of the actors. And third of all, we'll demonstrate the level of commitment to a peacemaking norm, i.e. the two-state solution, as an impact of capacity to act as a mediator. So what are going to be our uh, academic uh, contribution? First of all, we're offering groundbreaking methodological input. In fact, we will cross uh, sociology, history, international relation, conflict resolution, political science and media studies. Second of all, we are using a unique insights. We're giving a unique insights on the role of mediators in the advancement of peace. Third of all, we're studying uh, the nexus between mediation strategies and global image. And finally, we hope to be able to publish this result and this content in various leading um, uh, academic journals such as dealing with peace studies and conflict resolution. I have two questions. Uh, the first one, I would like to ask why do you, do you did not include the U.S. mediation into conflict, as they are the major uh, mediation in the past 30 or 40 years, whether and uh, and in peace, uh, comparing to China, which has like sort of a moderate mediation, or Switzerland, who has like more uh, no mediation or very little mediation. You know, the, the international relations is depending on two things, mainly on, uh, on, uh, on uh, interest and uh, power relations. Uh, and the three examples of, that you brought here actually uh, did not prove that uh, through the history, especially the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, that they have enough power to impact uh, the process of reaching uh, a peace agreement and actually quickly, like everybody here remembers well, the EU, Javier Solana or uh, Miguel Martinos, but, but after that you mainly remember that they changed it to women, but the people actually forgetting the name of her because their mediation has no uh, influence uh, at all in the peace process. So, uh, thank you. Um, wait, so we're going to answer. Uh, so okay. So basically, um, first of all, as you know, we're working as groups, and sometimes. Uh, 
I think many of us have to deal with the expertise of each member of the group. Um, so this might explain the first uh, choice of China, Switzerland and European Union. But what we want to offer is new insights. America as a mediator has been studied for quite a long time. China is really not the on the spot type of mediator. Switzerland is barely researched and European Union is a very challenging case. Therefore, uh, we prefer to uh, focus our attention on these three actors. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, as one of our, our hypotheses is, um, you know, the more a committed is an actor to the solution, uh, the less its potential impact uh, on mediation. Uh, the fact is, the U.S. is not very committed, you know. Uh, it's not a very interesting case to study, according to this hypothesis also. So that's why we also decided not to include this. Um, and uh, your question regarding power? And interest. And interest? What? Your question, your second question regarding power and interest? You know, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I would yeah. like to answer. <laughs> Just, okay. I would like to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the thing is that we, power is not variable in our study, and we are not that much interested in the power capacity of the actor, but more on its, the impact of its mediation strategy on its international position, on its international image, less on its, you know, its, its effective impact, its actual impact on the ground. So, um, and doing so, and, and doing so, basically, we're challenging the definition of power in mediation, um, and uh, really trying to bring new insight about what it means to have power as a mediator on the international arena. Thank you very much. <laughs>